Okay, here we go. Welcome to uh, reallibertymedia.com. It's rlmradio.xyz. And uh, this is What Matters, a Ponder Gander. I'm your host, Vincent Easley the second. We're uh, considering perspectives and connecting voices and uh, taking a look at what's uh, going on, particularly with the, uh, the Bundy Ranch. And uh, I'm going to catch up there. But uh, today I'm going to start out with uh, freedom of the press. And uh, the costs are high. And uh, a lot of end ups. Sorry. I'd like to have an onboard uh, edit there for end ups. Those, uh, those are my comments. And we're going to be talking about uh, what uh, should uh, people do when the government won't follow the law intended to keep them in check. And let's see, all these tabs. Here it is. I'm going to start over with uh, Kelly Patterson. And also, let's see, over here, some catching up from uh, last week. I, I kind of left off. And so I think I'll, I'll start with there, and we'll uh, run it together. So uh, journalism, and that ties in with, uh, with what we're talking about. Uh, truth, it needs defense. Be the media. I say James Madison wrote without popular information or the means of acquiring it, acquiring it is but a prologue to a farce or a tragedy or perhaps both. It is up to all of us to ensure that this uh, prologue is never written and to fight the true enemy of the people attacks on truth itself. The founding fathers understood the importance of journalism. Thomas Jefferson hoped for a republic governed by reason and truth, brought about by the freedom of the press. Because the press is the first that is shut up by those who fear the investigation of their actions. He reasoned it needs our protection. And I'm going to stop there and I'll come back. And this is uh, from uh, last week's Artunication. So I'm going to jump back over uh, to the realliberty.org site. And I want to talk about uh, what happened here at a press conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Kelly Patterson, uh, I know him from from Vegas. Uh, he does Cop Watch. Uh, he's been doing this for <clears throat> about seven years now. Uh, he, like I, uh, has a, a laminated piece of paper that has not been pre-approved by the state. Uh, what happened? Man. Uh, I meant to go find these videos on YouTube, which I'm pretty sure they are, but uh, I believe you can see everything you need here um, at the uh, Free Thought Project. I I'll put it, this will all be in the uh, the blog. Now, I had been pre-building it, but uh, it's radio on the run today, and um, so it would be uh, built afterwards. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, <clears throat> I'll read this. Both uh, uh, Lankowski and Patterson were arrested and cited on Wednesday for trespassing as do dozens of other media outlets who are accepted into the official club <clears throat> did the exact same thing they tried to do. If, you were, uh, if ever you were unsure of how the establishment feels about independent media, the video below should clear up any doubts. When police officers get to pick and choose who gets to ask them questions and deny people credentials and uh, parentheses or, or yeah quotations for asking real questions we have a problem transparency and accountability are the underpinning of a free society and when public servants start kidnapping people for upholding these important measures tyranny is not far behind that's from the free thought uh, project uh, uh, first amendment uh, die media las vegas uh, but I will include it. Uh, Kelly W. Patterson on uh, Facebook and uh, from uh, uh, friends of theirs. Uh, so, uh, let's see, Sequintech. Se Sequintech, no. Uh, I have a video here that I'll also include. I'll embed it into the uh, to the broadcast. And it shows the raw arrest footage from uh, LVMPD headquarters earlier that day. That's on the uh, 30th of last month, uh, January. 2019, uh, after two reporters from Nevada cop block, 
that's the Nevada Cop Block dot org and ACAB Radio uh, attempted to attend a press conference regarding the most recent police shooting in Las Vegas. And if I do recall correctly, that uh, that shooting was a, a man with a cane from they shot him from uh, 65 foot away because uh, they feared that he was going to uh, endanger somebody. Uh, now, this story from the Review Journal, uh, uh, the Las Vegas police removed member of Watchdog Group from briefing, and the video there, LasVegasReviewJournal.com. The men, members of Nevada clock, uh, cop, cop Block, uh, which described itself as an independent media group focused on police accountability, were cited for trespassing after one was handcuffed, and that was Kelly uh, Patterson. Uh, he refused to surrender his First Amendment rights, <clears throat> and we're going to come back and look at some uh, what he, uh, uh, what Kelly cited there, uh, a case ruling, and we're going to look at that also. <clears throat> now, I have, uh, I, I submit my laminated, laminated piece of paper, my cardboard that I shrunk down to laminate and hang around my neck, press correspondent. Now, I might uh, at this point have uh, uh, considered just a little bit uh, more specifically some of these words here, but it is nonetheless uh, <clears throat> does the trick. And uh, Grimner, uh, of course, helped with all this stuff and we've uh, moved it along. And then this edition here, I brought it together, my brother and I. And uh, it says, press correspondent, the person who is identified by this document is a member of Real Liberty Media News Team. The freelance bearer of this card is authorized to investigate and report on newsworthy events, incidents, and persons. And this part I added specifically. This is for identification and notification of intent. And there are the uh, reallibertymedia.com website. Myself, Vincent Easley II. My phone number, because uh, if you're going to represent yourself as media, uh, I should have pulled that one. I meant to do that. Uh, Tay Wiles. Uh, my number is 501-253-5256. That's for text only. If you want to reach me by voice, call me at home. And I'm listed, Vincent Easley, the second, Clinton, Arkansas. You can also find about.me, Vincent Easley, II. Uh, First Amendment rights, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right to people for uh, the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievance. <clears throat> all rights expressly reserved at all times and no rights are waived at any time. Clarifying. That's a... Uh, well, what's the difference? I don't need somebody to come along and tell me what... Uh, uh, I need to be approved. When I was at the courthouse, the federal courthouse in Las Vegas during the Bundy trial, uh, I was asked, why don't I go down there to the administration or wherever it is to, to get me an official press pass? My paper is as good as your paper. That's, that's that. that was a courtesy given notification right there. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we come to the merits, the First Amendment, which applies to the states through the 14th, and it prohibits uh, uh, prohibits laws abridging the freedom of speech or of the press. What difference may exist about interpretations of the First Amendment? There is practically universal agreement. I'm sorry, let me start that again. Whatever differences may exist about interpretations of the First Amendment, there is practically universal agreement that a major purpose of that amendment was to protect the free discussion of uh, governmental laws. Uh, this, of course, includes discussions of candidates, uh, structures, and forms of government, the manner in which government is operated or should be operated, and all such matters uh, relating to the political process. <clears throat> the, uh, the Constitution specifically selected the press, which includes not only newspapers, books and magazines, but also humble leaflets and circulars. Sea level uh, Lo Lovell versus City of Griffin, 
303-US-4458-CT-66-82-LED-949. And, uh, and how that to uh, play an important role in the discussion of public affairs. Now, hear that again. That uh, all these folks here from the newspapers and books and magazines, but also this humble uh, leafeteer, not crickets, right? Crickets uh, eat leaves, but uh, these uh, leaflets that uh, shouting from the corners with you sign around your neck or whatever, circulars. What role do they, it is a very important role that they play in the discussion of public affairs. We turn the tables. I say we, I, I may played one small part with uh, many greats there, in holding the media to account. Uh, Channel 8 News during uh, January 10th at the uh, Las Vegas police uh, station there. I, I challenge them. They better not cut none of that. And they put the whole 45 minutes up because they already had uh, clipped out Miss Carol Bundy uh, on uh, some of her statements. Uh, I saw how they work. Y'all a bunch of little sneaky uh, toe-the-line folks. But we uh, we have made a difference. These little leaf of tears that we are passing around, circling about. Thus the press served. The, thus the press serves and was designed to serve as a powerful antidote to any abuse of power by government officials and as a constitutionally chosen means for keeping officials elected by the people responsible to all the people whom they were selected to serve. <clears throat> Suppression of the right of the press to praise, criticize uh, governmental agencies, to praise or criticize governmental agencies, and to clamor and contend for or against uh, change, which is uh, <clears throat> excuse me, which is all that is uh, this editorial did. Sorry, that uh, that this is uh, from uh, Brandsburg versus Hayes, uh, 408 U.S. 665. 1972. Find that on uh, lawcornell.edu, Supreme Court text, uh, 384 slash 214. Um, so that was, uh, Kelly was talking about this, uh, Bransburg versus Hayes. So I went to find that. And uh, this is uh, more specific to uh, somebody with a newspaper uh, publishing something on election day. And they said, uh, you know, can't do that by state law. That uh, uh, here we see what really does, uh, how it goes to uh, the Supreme Court, and you, you cannot abridge the right of the press. Now, somebody's made a good point somewhere over on Facebook. Uh, if you have civil rights, then you lose your natural rights, and that is a trickery, but uh, we exist where we're at and uh, engage where we're at. We all have our place and role to play. So, uh, for me, I. I find it's a lot easier to um, to have that little sign around my neck, and that way uh, it is an identifier, and I don't have to worry about uh, police maybe a shoot me or nothing like that. Let's uh, let me take a ponder here. Okay, good, good, good. We're recording. Hope the volume is good, but uh, we'll uh, put some effects on that. I guess when we're done, there, Agram. <clears throat> Now let me uh, let me go back down. Uh, do I have uh, paperwork here to go with that at this time? Yeah, that comes along. So where are we at in life? We have a choice. You always have a choice. This uh, let me <coughs> insert this one in here. Um, this is a movie I watched the other night, and I was talking about it in chat. Man, it was very very difficult to watch it. It was. Uh, this the, the there's no it was so real looking the evil perpetrated the rape the the murder uh, all that ensues in in uh, what people most people call anarchy or lack of uh, lack of uh, law which uh, longer story right 
Well, it is the depravities of man and the evil. Uh, I, I like the uh, I like the way it ended though. Uh, there's so much metaphor and allegory in this movie that uh, you watch it again. But it is, like I said, it's very hard to watch. It's just gut wrenching to see uh, uh, what happens in there. Um, but it does end. It says there's uh, there's good people just like you. Don't give up on the world, and that's what we're here fighting for. Uh, you know, Kelly uh, Patterson, those other folks out there, cop block, all across the country, people are um, trying to make a difference. So. Look down that uh, lonesome road before you travel on, because uh, it's worth fighting for. Um, and as Freddie Mercury would have said, there's a, there's a bit of nonsense in the middle. And is this real life or just fantasy? Yeah, seek that out in the middle. I have this other page that I'm not sure I'm ready to uh, try to work on it. I need some more work in this might be a good topic for tomorrow with uh, with Flash on the Sabbath day. Um, <clears throat> live unedited. Let me have a swallow of this. <clears throat> okay, let me uh, roll on down here a little bit. So i got to backtrack. <clears throat> and like I said, and thanks for that Grammy Mary. She says, uh, love your press card, Vinny. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. Now, this comes, uh, this, this one here. Let's go ahead. <clears throat> I'll jump to this point. Um, this comes from uh, Miss Bud Fallon. <clears throat> She's an attorney. She's been involved with... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, land rights issues. She was uh, suggested, uh, and I thought maybe she was going to get it, replace uh, the head of the BLM, but they put that criminal back in charge over there. I <coughs> can't recall his name there, but uh, basically if you say uh, somebody at the BLM, then you might as well just say, yeah, criminal. Uh, <coughs> we'll talk some about There's a video, uh, and thanks, Jay Grady. You are awesome, uh, preserving the record, keeping the history uh, it's called uh, uh, Threats, Intimidation, and Bullying <coughs> by Federal Land Management Agencies. <coughs> and this will be in the blog. Civil uh, and Property Rights. Hold on a sec. <coughs> I had a frog I was trying to kick. Had him trapped. I think I got him set loose. So, <laughs> anyways, we've got... Uh, uh, what we're wanting to see here, in, uh, in, uh there was a quorum. Uh, let me start at the top. This is from October the 29th of 2013. There was a quorum present. Uh, that means something. And this is the uh, Subcommittee on Public Land and Environmental Regulations uh, uh, entitled uh, Threats and Intimidation, Threats, Intimidation, and Bullying by Federal Land Managing Agencies, uh, dealing with uh, civil and property rights. In a bundle, you would call them uh, water, grazing, mineral, and access to recreation. All these are uh, uh, particular rights in these what are called public lands. Um, and also discussed uh, by uh, Ms. Fallon was uh, what uh, rejection of, of people being ruled by uh, as subjects. And that the uh, Bill of Rights restricts governmental power and the system is broken, she says, and what we uh, now have uh, prevents people from making these grievances. Um, the, uh, the, the host uh, goes on to say, uh, uh, talking about uh, how abusive tactic, tactics are used to get the lands and so forth, uh, the you know, people off the land, and what we're talking about, the water rights, grazing rights. I hear you in chat. I'll be over in just a second. Let me... I guess I better go check, make sure everything's okay. Yes, I'm eating live uh, frogs, uh, live on air. Now, where was I at? Oh, in my hand. <laughs> and that tap. There, okay. <clears throat> Back to where I'm at. Uh, so, we're talking about these uh, alternative uh, tactics to get these uh, water rights, grazing rights, uh, people off the land altogether. 
uh, and you think you're preserving the the, the land, and they uh, they'll have you walking on a, a ribbon path, uh, no access to four wheelers, horseback. I I've seen it. It's uh, it's all across this land. <clears throat> to remove people is not uh, the best way to uh, fix things. That uh, no matter if they've uh, been messed up by people in the past, it's going to take people to fix them, and nature alone is not capable of doing that without uh, maybe perhaps uh, great amounts of time. But uh, it would never restore because there's always uh, degeneration, the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, you're not going to regain order out of uh, disorder. So uh, in all actuality, it requires the hand of man uh, on the land to uh, restore it or improve it. And uh, cattle are, are a tool uh, preventing uh, fire by grazing. Uh, there's a lot of invasive species out in the West that have, uh, you know, caused the whole environmental system to change, and that that can never, uh, could never ever be undone without a fantastic amount of work to to do that. And even then, that's questionable. Um, so, uh, talking about these alternative tactics, there's years-long campaigns on these people. Uh, You've got the kill list from uh, Dan Love, the uh, who was the uh, special agent in charge. Hey, it's 420 somewhere, plus one. Salud. I did have a 420 report uh, stacked up in there, too. But uh, perhaps not today. Um, back to where I was at. Mm. <clears throat> yes, the years-long uh, uh, campaigns of abuse. Uh, now, does the uh, Fifth Amendment hold sway over abusive powers? Uh I think not. We see the patterns of habit, uh, attitudes, uh, in discussions uh, on policies in the West, and, and how they they seek to, uh, by uh, attrition, wear them down. And uh, financially, there's no hope of uh, overcoming the deep pockets of the uh, Department of Justice, and uh, they are used. To so we have uh, we have the three branches of government. They're supposed to be a check on one another. And to represent the people uh, that uh, sent them uh, to represent them, the individual is uh, supposed to be protected from the majority and other individuals. The Bill of Rights does not give government power, uh, and uh, it protects is supposed to protect the people against abuse. Now, this power is wielded as a dictatorial bu bureaucracy by uh, color of their office, and, and that's what we. Uh, we have today uh, about us. <clears throat> we have, uh, let's see, I got uh, this one. Let's move this one. Uh, <clears throat> let's go to this. No, I'm going to skip that one. This would be a video on uh, YouTube. This is uh, Roger Stone uh, after a court appearance. It was uh, uh, on the Daily Quote Caller, so the War Room. Uh, talking about the FBI raid and CNN on the spot at uh, 5.50 a.m. Uh, Roger Stone reports, uh, pounding out the door. FBI, open the door. Boom, boom, boom. FBI, open the door. Roger Stone in his T-shirt. I did nothing wrong. Uh, Roger Stone T-shirt and shorts opens the door to the strike team. Uh, his wife was removed also from the house, uh, <clears throat> and I'll be back to find that uh, video there that relate, relates to this, at, uh, of removing people, because they're there with a search warrant, <clears throat> and to uh, that search warrant was to prevent the destruction of evidence. That's why they say they didn't just call them in. So, Stone says there were four general uh, Charges, he gave to an impending, uh, <clears throat> oh, impeding an investigation and false statements. So they seized his electronics, and uh, he was released on a $250,000 surety bond. Um, now, he also talked about these people on the the investigation team, with Mueller. Uh, I think his name, her name was uh, uh, Jeannie Rea. Uh, she was a uh, uh, big up there in Clinton's lawyer team. There's there's other folks here in, involved that are all they look like you know uh, Hillary's uh, hand picked team going after them. Um, 
<clears throat> let's see here what I got this uh, back to history yeah. here, here's another one that I didn't review I listened to but uh, this is from Fox News Graham calls uh, uh, Senator Graham from South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham uh, calls out the FBI and demands answers on Roger Stone raid. Uh, let's see, where is that other video? The one that I was just, I lost my place. I have to go back to the top and see if it's up there for going back down. should be at the top. I right, probably already got it. Yeah, I hit. Okay, so you got the Jay Grady. You got that one. That will be included for the last part of that. And then... Uh, here's another one. This is from a conservative citizen video. Joe De Genova discusses Roger Stone indictment. So this guy used to, he's a lawyer, I think. All these people are lawyers. Uh, let that be a figure. I don't think Roger Stone, by any means, has uh, clean hands. He's a, uh, you know, he lays in bed with uh, politicians. Let's see. Let me just look over here before I go too far. That's great. Like Here now, uh, he kept sorry. his promises on judges, taxes, uh, regulations, yeah. energy. That was the uh, was the Graham calls out FBI, and again that is from Fox News published on January 30, 2019. I know on YouTube. Here's uh, Roger Stone uh, reveals all after court appearance, and that is uh, from the Daily Caller published on January 29, 2019. And you can listen to all that there. All right, so that one's done. This is done. Put that there. Now, let's see. I'm going to have to go back over to realliberty.org. Um, and let me open another one, Real Liberty. So I leave my other place. So in place there. <coughs> uh Big shout out to Sound Minds for doing this. Uh, I happened upon it, and I was like, "Wow, that's that's pretty great." And I'll have to scroll here just a little bit. I posted stuff. I got up, went to bed early last night. Got up early, early this morning to uh, um, at least have a head start on this uh, radio on the run. <coughs> And I'm scrolling. There's some, a uh, couple of other ones there that I'll. Uh, oh, here's here we go. Before I get too far away, this is. Uh, uh, let me open up. What rights uh, do you have to stop cops from uh, entering? Um, I think all I really have to do here is just. Uh, I'll add this in the blog. But what rights do you have to stop cops from entering your house? Now, there's three ways that they can do that. That's either with warrant. Uh, by consent or exigency, Gency. I, I can't didn't say that right. Exig, exig, exigency. There you go. Uh, and that uh, that is meaning if there's an emergency, imminent uh, a crime, if they're in pursuit. Uh, uh, also, they can enter a house if uh, if it's uh, somebody's on probation or uh, parole. Um, there there's a lot of ways. Um, so, what they had with uh, Roger Stone, then, of course, was a warrant. And, and in this video, it talks about uh, the fact that why they take everybody out of the house. So that way, nobody, could, if they're there for evidence, that way nobody has the possibility of destroying evidence. Is what how they justify pulling out his wife. So here this is uh, from Sound Minds. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. Thanks, uh, Vince, for uh, the info needed to create this content. And he did a fantastic job. Uh, and this is on uh, YouTube. Uh, judge reports LaVoy shot nine times and pleads uh, uh, for mil mil Didn't shut down. All right, let me stop this. Now, this is a uh, judge, uh, uh, um, Gr Grady, what was his name? Uh, common, common.
grand jury, the, this whole business that got uh, Bruce Doucette the rest of his life in prison. Um, very dangerous uh, stuff that these people are doing and following liens and uh, uh, trying to hold account these people in office, but it backfired and uh, they're getting charged with the crime. Accuse the accuser, you know. Uh, well, I, I uh, really don't realize how much stuff I uh, share at times, but uh, some of these uh, works that, uh, that Ben's done here at Sound Minds is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, and, and then the amount of links that he had in there that uh, using off the uh, my broadcast here that he's been producing here. That, so we're going to try this differently this time. I'm doing the audio only on my end, and then I'll have all the links, and uh, um, we'll pitch it back at him and let him take his art. So this is uh, Judge Grasky. What is his name? Uh, <clears throat> let me go fetch that information. I'll tell you what I'll do. And his name is... Oops, hold still. Let me get back up there. Get up there and quit jumping around. Gary Darby, that's it. Judge uh, Darby. And uh, he's up there in Oregon. But anyways, he's around during the uh, uh, Oregon occupation up there and uh, Sugar Pine Mine and all that stuff. Bruce Doucette also. But uh, like I said, these people have uh, run themselves into a bad position. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, we've covered this part here. Uh, don't need that. I might as well start closing tabs when I'm done with that. Let's get that out of the way. Um, you know what? Uh, no, let me. I'll save that. I'll go back over to that part. And there is. Uh, let me close these out here. Let's see where we're at now. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, okay, so that video there, uh, that medley, says what uh, Sound Minds has done. He put this uh, audio from... Uh, some information Sarby about the unconfirmed reports. And his call uh, to, uh, and a request for action. Uh, and this is, uh, <clears throat> this was uh, right uh, at the time of uh, Lavoie Finnegan uh, murder. Federal. Federal property, of course, it's a federal. Now, mission. let's see. I and the governor's office that is So uh, he spoke with. Um, asked for action to take place. Uh, okay, there's a major Bomar who he got to speak with. I so, uh, uh, Major Bomar says he's always that playing. He said it a little later on. So he said it forwarded up through the uh, federal side and uh, uh, to the general Frank deputy director, state side, and. Uh, the federal government is lead, and it's in their hands. Uh, he spoke of the Title 32 forces, and that's been uh, it's been amended since the Homeland Security uh, all that took place. And uh, talking about contingency plans, because uh, Darby's calling for uh, uh, the arrest of uh, people impersonating, calling uh, mercenaries. Um, what was that one movie I've seen? Uh, it had the very same scenario as uh, mercenaries coming in to uh, play the role of the FBI. So uh, we see a possibility, and there was a U.N. free zone in John Day County where they were headed for the meeting uh, that day in Oregon in 2016, and uh, they were prevented from getting there. And so there's good possibility that these uh, war powers are uh, using, uh, I mean, it's not hard to, to figure that they're going to use private contractors. I mean, they use private contractors for prisons, so, you know, that's no uh, far leap. <clears throat> now, I'll, uh, I'll have to, this is a long, uh, I'm not going to say this out, I'll have to just include it where it is in the uh, uh, Unity for Command for Homeland Security uh, from 1992, and then again, 2006, we see an update. Uh, it's Title 32, Title 10, or a combination. Um, so again, from Judge Garvey speaking with uh, Major Bomar, and uh, back in 2016 during the uh, terrible draws that uh, happened then. <clears throat> so the uh, adjunct general is uh, so they're going to try to forward that up through. <clears throat> 
All right, I'm almost to there. If I got all this covered here, let me look at these pages. Yes, that's uh, Mama Bear. I, I was supposed to get with her and try to get some radio together with her and Chuckle Chili. That uh, they didn't come together, so my fault. My it is my fault. This one, my hand. Yeah. Okay, that's done. That's done. That's done. Remember, you always have a choice, and that page is kicked back for right now. So that means, let me just scroll just a little bit before I go back to where I think I'm supposed to be going. Yeah, here we go. <coughs> I think it fell right into place so I don't have to jump back to the other tag. Uh, what, uh, actually on, because I have an extra heading to go that. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, come here just a minute real quick. Guess i got to scroll for a little bit. There it is. Being above the law is a great advantage when breaking the law. Ha, thank you, Flash. I used that. Um, <clears throat> so what should people do when the government won't follow the law intended to keep them in check against abuse? So I spoke with uh, Ammon Bundy uh, last week on the uh, 24th, and coincidentally, the numbers at 24 minutes in on the Liberty Effect with Ammon Bundy, and it's over on SoundCloud. Uh, and uh, airs uh, every Thursday on uh, uh, Loving Liberty. And all that will also be included into the link. So, yeah, SoundCloud.com, the Joe Carey Show is still the toddling. Um, and I'll, I'll get to the, uh, a little bit of what uh, uh, I had to say. And it goes back into where we started about the uh, cardboard sign. <clears throat> right, Goober? I showed up with a cardboard sign. Give me a minute for a swallow of water, please. <clears throat> Thank you. And if you ever want to call in, uh, it's uh, to the Loving Liberty radio show, 801-331-8113. Um, Brian Hyde, uh, and he produces uh, Ryan's show for him. Uh, and I have some notes here for some of his shows. I, I'll bypass that. Uh, what do people do when the government won't follow the law? Uh, Ammon Bundy uh, asked. He talks about uh, what went on. He says, uh, Navarro was not our friend. That's uh, Judge Gloria Navarro. And uh, uh, there was too much for her to be able to continue the charade any longer. <clears throat> and she had to cut ties when uh she dismissed with uh, prejudice the uh, charges against uh, the Bundy et al. Uh, tiers one and two and three or tiers one and three. I'm sorry, tier two started and uh, people were convicted and are in prison <clears throat> for the same thing. These were kicked out on. Now they're trying to uh, they're filing to bring that back. That's where I need to go right back over here for some clarification. Where is it at? Which one of these? This one? <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, on this uh, appeal to retry, uh, we get that the Solicitor General has approved the appeal to be filed and not, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and not the actual retrial. All right. So, my holler. Let me see. Oh, that wasn't a call in. That was, uh, Chloe, that's the call in number to uh, uh, Loving Liberty. And, uh, yeah, we could get you in right here on, on this call. You're welcome to call in. All right. Now, back we're here. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so the Solicitor General uh, approved the appeal to, to be filed, not a retrial as of yet. Thank you, D. Uh, now, Gary Hunt, he says the Solicitor General only approved for Stephen Myrie to file an appeal. He, uh, now, and there's... Man, this kind of gets confusing here. <clears throat> Myrie's off the case, so the new AUSA is uh, white, uh, appoint or uh, acting uh, unit U.S. attorney, AUSA. <clears throat> so he says that uh, Myrie uh, is, was approved to file an appeal, and he hasn't filed yet. This is uh, two days ago, uh, uh, and he says then that the Ninth Circuit has to decide whether to hear the appeal or not. 
he goes on to say patience is required. There are a couple of more steps before a judgment can be made. And you can be sure that he, w he says that he will be writing about it uh, with access to the documents. And, uh, yeah, Freedom's Outpost, Gary Hunt. Steve uh, Knowles, a friend of mine, <coughs> they seem to have a little spat here uh, about exactly what. He says that uh, Stephen Myrie is not handling the appeal. The lady that was appointed, that's uh, White, I forget her first name, Miss White, uh, the new AUSA, and that uh, that was appointed acting district U.S. attorney is handling the appeal and working on the f on the brief for the appeal. He says he personally uh, he personally he believes it is uh, being done for the same reasons that Roger Stone was arrested the way he d he was. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, he also thinks that the evidence of government and prosecutorial malfeasance that was sealed from public view and not allowed uh, on the record, the government has way more to lose than any defendants in that trial. See, now, <clears throat> where I'd have contention with that is, is uh, um, they'll go back in with the same, uh, they, they'd start again and have the same uh, powers of uh, what's allowed. Uh, and again, what I was saying earlier, what Ammon Bundy said, um, he who asked the question first wins. <clears throat> and especially when you can determine what may or may not be asked or even said, uh, what uh, where is the where is the truth in that? It's a win at all costs, and that's the uh, that's the uh, scenario we see uh, every time. It's not a majority. I've got to say every time. There's there's uh, maybe uh, what? How often is it really that the prosecutor seeks justice uh, over conviction? Um. So he says all those pages of evidence, both the Wooten letters and the testimony that would now be required to be allowed into the courtroom is going to uh, be on the record and usable in other legal actions as evidence as well. And again, I, I don't think that they'll ever allow any of that. They're, they're posturing to, uh, to bring this back to bear on the Bundys and those that stood with them. Uh, and if they can do that, then all these unindicted co-conspirators and uh, myself... Uh, possibly be in one you know they uh, they'll come one or ten or uh, 20 at a time and uh, you know that's what we're looking at what what are you willing to do are you willing to stand up when you know people are, are saying is it time to revolt oh, we're in a revolt now this is a revolt a serious business you say I don't care about the Bundys it's not about the Bundys yeah, I action for the Bundys I champion for them and is my cause uh, I, uh, I've been a part of it for, since uh, well, not since the beginning. Well, uh, in a way, I go back in my history, goes back in you know, uh, in school days and playing football against those boys up there in Bunkerville and Mesquite, and, uh, riding that country horseback, the three wheeling, uh, uh, hunting, fishing, uh, all that. That area, you know. So yeah, my history does go back. I was there in 2014 and went back for the trial in 2017. Oh, carried over into 2018. Went to Salt Lake City to listen to Carol Bundy and uh, Jeanette Finnicum speak. And to Denver for Bruce Doucette's trial. To Lompoc, California for uh, Hellboy's ride with Dwayne Emer. Lots of other things. This is something that needs to be done and, and by everybody. Ammon asks, what do you do? Well, when I called in, I says, uh, well, hey, Hawk, Goober, Gooberzilla in chat. I wonder if you're there. Uh, I, I brought a sign. Uh, a simple one at first, just a white sign that said media on it. But uh, I've since decided that we're the press and the, the, the media is the mainstream and those are the liars. So we press for the truth. We press on. That's what we're doing. Amos says, uh, oh, what are we to do? First of all, uh, anybody uh, responding to this question and bordering on uh, the words that can be taken and used against you, I again... I forewarn you to guard your words. Don't let them be used against you. People are in prison for words they've said. Um, when a guy's in life without parole in California, he's been in for 21 years, I guess since he was 20 or something like that. Uh, uh, Lone Star 1776 here. I've seen his post on Facebook about that guy. I didn't look any closer. But, yeah, just for words, uh, you can 
you can be locked away forever. Conspiracy, that's uh, that's usually comes with federal charges. Conspiracy is always part of it. And that's where they get it. Words. What you say you might do or would do or yeah. So I caution you. Can't caution you enough. Guard your words. What do people do when a government won't follow the law? What do you what are they to do? You know, we we see how uh uh grossly shocking and uh, happening is happening in courts all the time. The prosecution won't allow uh, certain evidence before the the jury. The FBI was involved in the uh, the case there, and that was denied in the Nevada trial. Uh, Gloria Navarro found a universal sense of justice had been violated, and there was flagrant misconduct and substantial prejudice, and a win at all costs, and that's what we. Uh, found uh, in that and in public records from Judge Navarro. They willfully failed to disclose uh, evidence. And these all again from Judge Navarro's statements. Uh, the uh, appointed U.S. I said assistant. The appointed U.S. attorney showed bad faith and uh, for withholding evidence. They started with this 1,000 pages. Brady and Giglio violations and uh, uh, did not mean, oh, did not meet its responsibility, n not of the uh, state prosecution and so forth, um, and none of none have been charged for their crimes. They get away with it. They do it time and time again. There's no accountability. I spoke this earlier, earlier broadcast. Um, what is this? Keep uh. Oh, I ran into uh, a little extra there. That's not for this. Yeah, almost ran over into that. And these I covered uh, before, so that's that's done there. Um, we could go on here further uh, in this uh, this feed, but they they're working out who is uh, who's going to be the 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 hog the well, I'm not going to say it like that. Who's going to be in control? All right, let's run back over. <coughs> run down. So, going for an hour today. And we'll see if we can't do a little finer art tunication. All right, so there, I'm past that. Let me uh, get it back over here. This was that, uh, let me open this. This was that uh, thing I was talking about. Wait a minute. Yeah, the unity of command for homeland security. So, you know, that'll go into the blog. There's a lot to read between the lines there. Uh, <clears throat> so here we are to the. Uh, actually, let me uh, let me go see how much I've got over here that uh, from last week. I think I've covered this. I think I'll just come and bring this all back together from for next week. That can be a little more uh, cartoon. But here we had in 2012, Oregon ranchers Dwight and Stephen Hammond were convicted of felony arson and sentenced to five years imprisonment under the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act of 1996. Um, these came along after the 93... World Trade Center bombing, I believe it was. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking. But anyways, you know, they incrementally uh, f uh, they assailed the uh, civil rights of Americans. So this conviction was the result of two rat routine backburn fires started on the uh, private property spreading to small parcels in adjacent uh, federal land on July the 10th of 2018. Um, President Trump signed an executive grant of clemency for both men. However, the initial the initial conv conviction resulted in the loss of the Hammond Ranch's BLM grazing rights. And today, that was three days ago, the Department of Interior uh, notified the Hammonds that uh, their grazing rights had been restored. That's from Readout News. 
Thanks, Sherry. You're awesome. It's about time, Chuck Stillman says. Here was that 420 report. Uh, California proposes uh, slashing pot taxes to help regulate uh, the industry so against the black pr prices of the black market. Hey, guess what? Oh, that's not it. We've got to go further for that. I thought that was the, because this is the first day of our drive, our annual f uh, fun fundraiser. Not fundraiser, but hey, we are scraping by over here, so uh, if we had a fundraiser, we'd use it for certain and make it last as long as we can. Come on over, and I'll, I'll grab you the link. We'll uh, include it in the blogcaster, and I'll bring it back to class, uh, chat here in a minute. And, uh, yeah, chip in. We've got uh, server fees, and it ain't much. It ain't much, and we've already got a head start. I think I was the first donator today, early this morning, of the official day. But we've got some uh, fine folks that, uh, that keep it uh, going. Now, did I have that in comment? Because, let me go back up. Um, Leah... Is that, yeah, Leah Satilli, she, uh, she had response. I didn't have it in there. Oh, okay, that was that. Yeah, I don't have it in there. Leah Satilli said that they'd set a lot of fires, and she has a long list, so I'll try to find that for the uh, blog also. You know, and considering perspectives, we're going to take a look at what she has to say. Uh, she has a, a definitely an agenda, and... She uh, she manipulates and slants her words. She's a, she's a professional writer. So then people that have this same uh, ideology and agenda, sure, they uh, follow it right along. Here's a, a lingering occupation uh, that is uh, behind the documentary, documentary of the Malheur, stand, Malheur standoff. Uh, filmmakers Richard uh, Wilhelm and Sue uh, Arbuthnant. Ar Discuss her new documentary. Find that at uh, refugefilm.net. I haven't checked it out yet. <coughs> I intend to. So here I am. Looks like back to uh, last week. There's the uh, uh, threats, intimidation, and bullying. Um, <coughs> so I believe I'm done here. Let's go address. Uh, uh, there it is. I'm the, thank you, barman. I'm going to like that right there. A ponder gander, considering perspectives. All right, so let's kill this tab. And uh, to me, is this uh, a notification? Let me just click it again to make sure. And let's scroll down. Let me go talk to this gal here. I think I already said a little bit of something about it, but I think it might have been before we came to air. Going down. Hey, Jeff Banner. Uh, good to meet you out there, man. Retreating. I think we're getting close. Where are you? Where are you? There you are, Miss Tara Stomp. Oh, circle light. Didn't write that. And you didn't say if I could read your thing or not. You wouldn't get mad. Okay, so Tara Stomp says, uh, and I'll have to click on where I read this. Uh, first of all, okay, she says, let's go back up here. Department of Justice, I say, uh, which has sadly become known as the Department of Injustice, and which I'm not really saying, but paraphrasing somebody, uh, is uh, circling the wagons. Uh, and that's what CTW stands for when you see me put that instead of WTC or WTF or WTH, CTW. So, WTC backwards, CTW, circle the wagons to cover the dishonest and unethical tracks of Stephen and misspelled the name. I copied it. Myrie. Thank you, Skyrie, for correcting me. Yeah, yeah, and Dan Sheese. So it's my, my, Myrie, Daniel Sheese, and other prosecutors that would be that naughty, naughty Ahmed. <laughs> oh, God. It's like a, a backstreet movie, in, made in Vegas movie, I'm telling you. Yeah, prosecutors, they, uh, 
Yeah, that's who they were supposed to be for the District of Nevada. So they are the federal cops subjoining uh, su uh, perjury, suborning perjury. Demanding a new case. And so Miss Terror comes along and says, Cliven is stealing and lying to his supporters. Why are you okay with that? Stealing what and what lies? <clears throat> stealing from the people by running his cows without paying his fair share and the claiming the land is his. Those lies and thefts. Well, we talked about that earlier, right? About those properties that uh, are owned. Look at some of these papers over here. No, it is. Yeah. Uh, right over there. We already read that. Yeah, water, grazing, mineral rights, access. Access to the land. So, uh, yeah, that that lot, those lies and theft. So I say, first of all, what is uh, what's his fair share? Secondly, Cliven exercises uh, the use of his property, water, grazing, and access to them. She says his grazing fees, like everyone else, that uh, he hasn't paid in 30 years, almost 30 years, Tara, uh, and he runs his cattle. Everywhere, not on his 160 acres uh, th that he owns. All he owns, she says. Well, let's go on up. No, let's go. I gotta drop out of that. I keep telling her wrong. Then she finally comes along. Let me just skip on up her to the top. Can't then? Can you prove it? She says. Melon Farm is a title. I actually I remember that later on after that. Yeah, the the Melon Farm is a title. So what's wrong with that? protects the government from stealing their property as uh, you know Mormons are our family folks so they're definitely it's going to stay in the family and go down but you know the government will tax you to death uh, tax you in death tax you in life uh, take it all that's what they're out there so can I prove it well, well I don't have to prove Clive and Benny been running cattle uh, he had a contract so he obviously had his cattle there and then he says I'm not signing contract with BLM anymore because they're here to run me out of business no, 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 thank you, please. So, whoever asked the question first wins. Ah, you backed me up into that, but I unanswer your question for you then. You prove it. So, what if it's a melon farm, farm in trust? Um, but he does own those, and that's been uncontested. Now, they're trying to steal it from him, and that's the whole issue. And that, which we are against, and it does matter, believe you me, What's going on with the Bundys? Because they're not the first. They're not going to be the last. And uh, pretty soon they'll get the West tamed. And then they'll be coming for me and you back here in our uh, safe little places back east or up in the hills and up north. There's no place to hide. Uh, we're in a war. We're in an occupation. These people have uh, privilege and they're abusing it. And uh, time to uh, stand up and revolt be revolted I'm revolted have you revolted <laughs> guard your words remember that for sure alright well you know what I think I've killed this old boy here or old gal here Tara Stomp she got the stomp now you prove it And I left, I still have an unanswered uh, quarry from uh, Don Quixote, and that's way down there. I'll have to find it. Still have that to address. Anyways, I think we'll uh, call this good. And uh, let me go over here and just put a stop to the whole ordeal right now. Thanks for listening. Hey, uh, this Freakers Friday, uh, Grammy, I think will be along tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, that's uh, Central Time, 7 Eastern. At 11 Eastern, we've got the Freakers Ball, y'all, Moose, Girl, and Grimner. And tomorrow, I'm going to be joining uh, Slasheroo on uh, the Dork Table. And uh, that is, uh, I always mix up Tuesdays and, uh, and uh, <laughs> Saturdays. It's at noon. It's at noon Central or noon Eastern. And uh, Grimner comes along. We play some trivia on Sundays over here at the Real Liberty Media uh, channel. Jump in and join along, listen to some blues with Grimner, and uh, 
start about 11. My time, Central. End of 3 o'clock on the eastern uh, seaboard at noon o'clock. Out on the left coast, Hal Anthony comes from behind the woodshed for the notice and the news. Tips on avoiding being run down and run over in this occupation. Uh, Monday, we got grim leftovers. Come on along and, and sup it up with us. And Tuesdays, we got flash again in a perfect world. And I'll be along then as well. And back to Wednesday is Grammy at 6 Central. Thursday, we got 7 o'clock. Uh, I believe that's Eastern. Uh, flash a again. 20% off. Such a deal. Oh, yeah. Call me gum. Appreciate y'all listening. And I'll see you over there in the chat channel. And uh, see you next time.